Hello! In this video, we will be talking to you about the uses of graphene in solar cells. Specifically, we will be talking about how to incorporate graphene onto the surface of solar cells to make them less expensive and more efficient. Throughout this video, we will introduce the properties of graphene, the structure of solar cells, and explain the way that scientists are trying to incorporate gra graphene into solar cells. A typical thin film solar cell consists of a transparent conductive layer, an anti-reflective coating beneath that, an n-type semiconductor, a p-type semiconductor, and another conductive layer. In a solar cell, the n-type semiconductor layer is called the window, and the p-type semiconductor layer is called the absorber. All of these layers are stacked on a substrate layer. The top conductive layer forms the cathode, or negative terminal of the cell, and needs to be as transparent as possible to allow light to enter the solar cell. The lower conductive layer serves as the anode, or positive terminal, of the cell. N-type semiconductors are doped with material like phosphorus so that there is a surplus of electrons. P-type semiconductors are doped with a material like boron, creating holes, which are positively charged places where electrons would normally be. When these two different types of semiconductors are sandwiched together, some of the extra electrons from the N-type semiconductor move into the holes in the P-type semiconductor. This interaction at the junction of the two semiconductors creates a depletion zone with an electric field that keeps additional electrons from the n-type semiconductor from moving to the p-type semiconductor. In order to actually generate electric current from a solar cell, the anode and the cathode of the cell must be connected to an electrical load. When the solar cell is exposed to light, photons will pass through the transparent conductor and enter the depletion zone. When a photon with the right energy level strikes an electron, it dislodges the electron so that there is now a free electron and a corresponding hole where the electron was. The electric field in the depletion zone ensures that the electron does not go back into its original location and instead separates the whole electron pair. The resulting movement of the electron in the hole causes the electron to move from the anode to the cathode of the solar cell, generating electric current. Clusters of these solar cells are manufactured together in solar panels as a way to harness the sun's renewable energy. The sun provides the most abundant, reliable, and pollution-free energy in the world. So, why aren't solar panels used as a universal energy source? Currently, so solar panels are expensive to manufacture due to the cost of their semiconductive material and the fact that they are less efficient than other sources of energy. There are three main types of solar panels, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film. The monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar panels use silicon as a semiconductor. Silicon is usually a relatively cheap material, but in order for it to work efficiently in solar cells, it has to be purified. The purification process makes the silicon more expensive, thus making these two solar panels costly options. Thin film solar cells are relatively cheap because they are made of a polymer material that is coated in a photovoltaic substance, but they can become costly depending on the type of photovoltaic material that is used. For example, indium tin oxide, or ITO, is a, good, is a very good conductor used in organic solar cells, but it costs almost $200 for only 5 grams. The efficiency of a solar cell is defined by the energy that a source is emitting over a specific amount of time compared to the energy that is receiving over a specific amount of time. While thin film solar panels are the least expensive, they also turn out to be the least efficient of the three types. The monocrystalline solar cells produce four times the amount of energy as the thin film solar panels because they are made of high-grade silicon. So, there is a toss-up between cost and efficiency. We can make the thin film solar panels more efficient, but that raises the cost. If only there were a material that is inexpensive and efficient that could replace the expensive ITO conductive layer on thin film cells. Introducing Graphene Graphene sheets are composed of tightly bonded carbon atoms, which are hexagonally arranged. The sheet's atomic thickness is an astonishing 0.345 nanometers. Graphene is a semi-metal with high electrical conductivity. Carbon atoms typically have six electrons, four electrons in the outer shell and two in the inner shell. In graphene, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms, leaving one electron free for electronic conduction. Additionally, graphene is known for its incredible strength. Graphene's carbon bonds are 0.142 nanometers in length and contribute to its high tensile strength of 130 gigapascals, which is stronger than that of steel and Kevlar. Lastly, graphene is extremely lightweight at 0.77 milligrams per square meter. If a single sheet of graphene were stretched to cover an entire football field, its total weight would amount to less than one gram. Even though graphene is a good conductor, 
It has difficulties collecting and holding the electrical current produced inside solar cells. Researchers are currently looking for ways to modify graphene so that it is able to store energy for longer periods of time. One improvement for the usage of graphene in solar cells could be to utilize graphene oxide, which is slightly less conductive, but a better overall charge collector. In terms of finding a sustainable solution, one way to improve the use of graphene in solar cells is to dope the sheets of graphene with oxygen to create graphene oxide, a less expensive compound that holds charge better than its predecessor. Scientists pursuing the solution have speculated that if the technology were to be successfully developed, it could replace the current material of choice, ITO, a transparent electrical conductor, but rather brittle and expensive. This in turn entails that the use of graphene in solar cells could not only be economically sound, but due to the myriad of properties, it could also revolutionize solar energy production. Refining these graphene sheets could potentially allow the resistance of the solar cells to be an order of magnitude lower than its current state, outperforming indium tin oxide on both conductivity and transparency. Graphene sheets are composed of hexagonally arranged carbon atoms which create what looks like a honeycomb pattern. Processing the graphene differently alters the structure of graphene, which improves its properties and allows it to perform better in photovoltaic cells. When sheets of graphene are stacked, the strength of the material can be up to 200 times stronger than structural steel. It would take an elephant balanced on top of a pencil to break through a sheet of graphene. Because graphene is extraordinarily strong, lightweight, and highly conductive, its usage is advantageous in many industries, including, but not limited to, electronics, storage, and of course, photovoltaic cells. Knowing all of the evidence that we have gathered, we can affirm that graphene is an economical and efficient solution for improving solar cells.